So, um, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for attending today's webinar regarding um, this FlexRig tutorial and XAP development. Um, <clears throat> my name is Mikel Irazabal. I'm an OSA senior uh, software engineer working for the Open Air Interface Alliance right now. Um, and I will be talking a bit about FlexRig today. So uh, let's start. I think it's time for it. <clears throat> so the general agenda for today is uh, I will talk a bit about the Oran architecture. Then I will move to the FlexRig uh, general aspects and principles, uh, Oran XAP architecture, FlexRig XAP design, frequently asked questions. Then we will go to a uh, live coding. And then there will come some questions and answers. But um, you can make questions and answers whenever you want to. Uh, people from the team, they will try to answer them. And um, if not, I will try to command them at the end of the presentation. So <clears throat> let's just start a bit with the general Oran architecture. Um, this is the Oran architecture as it is presented by the Oran Alliance in the uh, Upper part, you can see the service management and orchestration framework or SMO in purple, which uh, has in itself a non real time rig. And um, um, through the in blue, you can see what is the uh, near real time rig, which is the central part of the Oran design, as you can see. Um, it is bound through the A1 and O1 interface to the SMO. And in the south one, um, you basically have these E2, E2 interfaces, which it, they can go to the an inode B, a CUCP, CUUP, a DU, or even a monolithic GNOD, which here is missing, actually. FlexRig basically consists on the near real-time rig and on in the agent that is embedded either in the inode B, in the CU, in the U. So it's basically, um, you need the, the head and the tail. Of the coin, so FlexRig, you have both of them. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk a bit about the general aspects and principles of FlexRig. Uh, so um, FlexRig was meant from the beginning to be ultra lean for low latency and resource restricted use cases. So basically, we were following what is known as the zero overhead principle. Um, this meant uh, no containers. Uh, we will talk a bit about that later. We also wanted to be flexible and forward compatible. We already knew that there were going to come some uh, use cases which we were not aware of at that moment. And for that, we use uh, static and dynamic polymorphism. Um, dynamic polymorphism is object-oriented programming and static polymorphism is, is generic programming. So um, no rocket science there. Um, we want it also to be RAT agnostic and vendor neutral, uh, following the SD RAM principles. So we wanted it to connect to OAI, um, SRS RAN, to be 4G, 5G. This was important from the beginning. And we decided that the service models, they should be implemented as shared objects, or basically as, as plugins. So we try to reduce the, the coupling in the system as, as much as possible. So uh, FlexRig was born. Um, the beginning, it had uh, 10 out of 26 messages done in ASN.1 and flat buffers. We had the MAC, RLC, and PDCP service models. We had this near real time and E2 agent. So, both of the, of the things. We developed also IAPs for low latency communication. This was also important from the beginning. We will talk a bit later about the encoding and the decoding, how it works. Uh, and it was approximately 10,000 lines of code. Um, and here you can have the link and read a bit more if you're interested in the first design. Um, but what has now FlexRig become? Um, it has become multi-X, and here I mean multi-vendor. Uh, we have patches. Uh, you can connect it to uh, OAI, but also to SRS RAN. <clears throat> Multi-RAT, so now you have 4G and 5G. Multi-language, so the X apps, they can be developed in C and Python, but you could also develop them in many other languages. We will also talk about that a bit later. Um, Multi-agent, you can connect as many agents as you want. This means as many base stations as you want. And multi X app. So again, from both of the sites, you can connect. Uh, it is one rig to many E2 nodes and one rig to many X apps. 
For that, we had to develop a new protocol, which it was called E42. Um, we will talk a bit later. We develop also new service models, um, slicing and, and traffic control, which um, they are right now under revision in some journals. And I hope that um, we can open source them soon uh, for the community. Uh, slicing it basically, as you probably know, it deals with the resource blocks on the, on the Mac and traffic control is more regarding um, the packets in itself. It's more regarding uh, the buffer broad effect, this kind of, of problems. And Flexor has grown from, from 10,000 to 50,000 lines of code. <clears throat> so now let's focus a bit on the X app that I think that is what most people um, you are interested in here. <clears throat> so um, Oran defines these two architectures, a network API and SDK approach for um, defining the, the X app. On the left, you can see this network API design. Um, and on the right, you can see the, the SDK design. The basic idea is that the one on the left, the network APIs, some of the burden of the connections and so on, um, it has to be dealt with the within the X app, while on the right, uh, the SDK will uh, do most of the work for, for you. So basically in the SDK approach, the one on the right, the end user, you are liberated from, from doing a burden of accounting and so on. Um, so this set in in, in test is, is this from the Oran standard. <clears throat> Basically, we can take that um, a data encoding protocol, ASN.1 protocol of, or JSON is, is needed for the network API. Uh, you also need the network transport protocol, SCDB. HTTPS is not a, a, a transport uh, protocol. It's, in, it's an application one, it's layer seven. I think this is a, actually a little back in, in ORAN specifications and the same applies for gRPC. Um, and you need to associate some security and encryption in, in the, this network API approach. While in the SDK approach, probably the most interesting things is that um, you provide simple APIs, which was the idea of Flexric from the beginning, to provide as simple as possible, yet complete. And uh, it handles all the routing management under the hood. So you don't need to care about how many uh, messages are sent, sockets, and so on, which we also believe that it accelerates um, or it reduces the development time of, of the programmer. In this case, um, regarding the requirements, Oran is a bit extensive here. Um, well, what they say is uh, an X app may enhance the RRM capabilities. Okay, uh, it may be associated with zero, one, or more service models. It looks logical that you can do one or, or more than one things. For example, the KPM, and you could read some statistics. So through the run control, you could con control something on the and the genome B or the C or the DU. Um, XAP shall use the, the near real time APIs to make use of the information elements. Um, of course, you need to, to retrieve the data somehow. Uh, XAP is associated with a given service model. Um, and it could uh, be associated with any E2 node. So this also seems logical. Uh, you can connect to different uh, genome Bs. XAP uh, shall be able to receive event-triggered information on run information. Um, this is also quite um, obvious. And shall provide collected login tracing metrics information. And here, on the last point, we start um, they start here thinking a bit uh, about the non-real-time rig and what an XAP should provide. Um, and here it continues. Uh, XAP shall provide a descriptor that includes the following basic information configuration. So it includes a data dictionary for configuration data, metadata such as YAN definition, list of configuration parameters and their semantics. May also include an initial configuration for control, the types of data that an XAP consumes and generates, and, and metrics. It includes a list of metrics. Um, this, all these ideas, they are basically thought 
um, for communicating with the non-real-time rig. So um, if you are developing an X app and, and you don't really need to communicate with it, you can basically um, do not care much about these specifications. Um, and here are the last ones. Next app shall be uh, capable of discovering the near real-time rig APIs they consume. Um, my impression is that this is regarding uh, reflection. I think that the standard they want to introduce and reflection. I don't know how. And um, we want to wait to see how, how it evolves uh, before we actually move on and implement something there. So um, this is how it looks, the, the API of the X app. So from the left, we can see uh, that somehow we need to communicate with a database and share the data layer. So the near real-time rig, it has embedded a, a database. We somehow need to communicate also with this API enablement. This is for what I mentioned, I reckon, this is for these reflection things. We need to look more carefully there how much we need. Um, but until now, we, we didn't need much of this. Um, the two on the top is regarding the management and the A1 termination for policies and so on. Um, I want to say that um, I can understand why we want these things, but most of, of them, they can be implemented directly from the X app. Um, so I would like also to see how this evolves. Actually, the communication is, is very easy. It's an HTTP server and it can be pretty straightforward implemented. But we, we need to see how, how we need to see a good use case and why we should like to, to have this. And then on the right, we have the E2 termination, which is probably the most interesting one because this lets you talk with the service model and with the RAM function. So basically with the with the base station for which you can subscribe, get some data. Uh, or send control parameters. Um, this is um, basically what I have just uh, explained with just the, the words of the of the standard. <clears throat> so let's move a bit to the flex rack flex rig exam design, which I want to talk a bit how it was designed and, and the reasons of why it was designed in this way, so that you can later also understand um, the trade-offs and, and how actually it works. <clears throat> so this is more or less how it looks, this SDK. On the left, we have this E42 protocol, which it is bound to an SCTP endpoint. Then we have something that it's basically the X sub core or the API in which there is embedded a, a database, an SQLite 3 database. And then we have a little layer here of SWIG. SWIG is um, a, a, basically it's a, a compiler for different languages. So it will take your C code and it will generate wrappers for other languages such as Python, Java, Go, TKLD, C Sharp. We, we will talk about this in a sec also. So the E42 design, um, so Oran has some limitations um, and we needed a protocol between the, the SDK and the near real-time rig, which is not defined. Um, so in looking at this, we said like, you know, it, it looks pretty much as if we could reuse the E2 protocol. In some cases, it, you know, the, from the XAP perspective, the SDK, it looks like an E2 node, but sometimes, you know, it looks like a rig. Um, so how can we deal with this? So, uh, yeah, we basically came with this E42 protocol. We also saw that, for example, you would also need to extend the E2 at some point because you need an, a node concept. In E2, when you are sending the, the packet, you know where you are sending it, so you don't need to specify it. Um, actually, because you know the socket and basically it will identify the packet and later if you are sending it through, through SCTP, I mean you have your identifiers. But if you are sending it from an X app and you can have different X apps in different places, you need to specify actually to which E2 node you, you want to send. And the semantics of onboarding, the standard talks about the X apps, they can be onboarded 
on the near real time rig, but they, they didn't say like how. So we decided to enhance E2, and this is the result of E42 with five new messages E2 setup request, setup response, subscription request, sub subscription delete request, and rig control request. So this is a bit how it looks, the, the graph. So at the beginning, uh, the E2 agent will send E2 setup request to an IP address all the time. And maybe many of you, you have seen something like resending E2 setup request. Um, and you are sending it. We, there is a timeout right now of three seconds, I believe. And every three seconds, if you don't get an answer, you will resend the new setup request until the rig is up. And at that moment, you will get the setup response. So um, in this case, the SDK, it looks a bit like the E2 agent in the sense that um, you will also wake up and you will try to, to make a setup request. When you make the setup request, actually, you don't have an identifier yet. And when you get the setup response, the rig, the IAP, I, I write here IAP and to, to say like the, the to define the interface, which is looking to the SDK. <clears throat> um, the rig will assign you an, an identifier so that there are, can be as many X apps as, as you want. Uh, all of them, they, they can be uniquely identified on the rig. And once you, you are connected, you can, of course, from your X app, ask um, E2 nodes, like, tell me how many E2 nodes they, they are connected, and it will answer you with an array of data. Um, for subscription request, uh, pretty similar. From the XAP, you will send this subscription request. The E42 subscription request will come to the rig. We need to do some accounting because there may be multiple XAPs. So we need somehow, um, and, and from the E2 agent perspective, there is only one rig. So there is one thing that is called the rig request ID. So we need to, to change it here. There's some accounting. We need to send this E2 setup request. It will answer the agent and we will send the subscription response. As you can see, the subscription response, it, it can be um, the same as E2. We don't need an E42 in this case. And then once it arrives to the SDK, we will get the answer in our XAP. Um, we decided to do this as a blocking call for different reasons, but among them is that asynchronous programming, it may be very hard. Um, and this is also pretty natural from the user's perspective. When you send something like report, you wait there until you get an answer. It's not that your program continues and your answer will come at some point and then you need to handle that. Um, oops, sorry. For, for the rig indication, uh, of course, when, once you have subscribed to a request, you normally send a timeout. You say, I want the statistics every five milliseconds and every five milliseconds, a rig indication message will be generated, which it will go to the rig and from the rig to the SDK and from the SDK to the, to the X app. How about control? Well, the same story here. Basically, we need first a setup request. We need a setup response between the E2 node and the near real-time rig. We can later initialize the X app with the setup request, and we will get the setup response. And then we can start sending control requests there. Uh, again, between these both control requests, um, you will be blocked in the sense that you will be waiting. Yes. Um, we will see later that this does not affect at all the, the latency. <clears throat> well, and what about the XAP SDK core? How does it look? So maybe we can say that some of the principal parts are the, the message handler, the thread safe, um, where you basically, whenever a message comes, I will handle it. I will put it in the thread safe queue from the thread safe queue. It will normally uh, be written to the SQLite tree because we always write per default in a database, or we and we will send it also through our suite to the X app. Uh, we also generate a pending events. Pending event is when I was explaining that you send the message and you need an answer. So what we do is you, we generate a, a timer that we set it to five seconds. And if in five seconds we don't get an answer, you will basically get an assertion. Um, we have many people that they have reported here some problems, and most of the times it is not directly related to FlexRig. 
uh, or sometimes, um, some other times it is. Um, but FlexRig is the software. I mean, the idea is to fail fast. So if you get out of what it should be, what it is controlling the finite state machine of, of your program, we basically decided to, to fail actually to, to find bugs. Um, and it does find bugs. <clears throat> This is actually um, a recently found uh, data race in, in E2 control that uh, this was actually the problem of, of uh, FlexFreak. Actually, um, as you can see here, the message it may look a bit cryptic, but you can see here, trying to extract a key not found in the tree. So we are trying to extract a key from a, a red black tree, as we can see, it's an associated red black tree dot C. Um, we can see also, that uh, we are referring to a, a by map, yes? So if we know something about data structures, by map, in this case, it is implemented as two red black trees. So it, it is nothing special there. And what we were trying here is to re remove a pending event. So what was the problem actually? So the problem coming back here is that the X app, it was sending, a, of course, it was not happening all the time. If not, we would have caught it. So the X app, it was sending this control request message. And the after just sending the message, we normally um, account, we store this pending event. So what it was happening actually is that it was sending the control request and just afterwards, the container, it was descheduling the thread. So the message was going to the rig, from the rig to the E2 node, from the E2 node back with a control acknowledge, back again to the X app and the receiving thread, thread sorry. <clears throat> it was actually um, reading this message, going to this uh, by map, to this red black tree or a dictionary in Python, if you want to call it like this, hash table, whatever <clears throat> um, you want to name it. And uh, it was not there. So basically it was failing saying like, you know, I, I got a control acknowledge, but I didn't generate this control request. This was this was the idea. Well, um, of course, this X app was running in a containerized environment. This goes for all the people that um, they believe that running containers is as fast as running um, just normal code within the operating system. It is not. It sounds to me a bit like the discussion with uh, the Java virtual machine in the 90s. Um, it is not actually, I mean, you, you, you are adding an abstraction layer and, and you, you pay for, for what you use. <clears throat> so um, which were the exact SDK design principles? We wanted simplicity. So we follow the KISS principle. We wanted it to be multi-language. This was from the very, very beginning, we wanted C, C++, Python, and other languages, and we wanted it to be efficient. So <clears throat> the XAP API, uh, this is what we came with. Um, very easy, I believe. You can just init and stop. You can ask for all the E2 nodes that they are connected to the rig. You can subscribe and you can remove a subscription. So you can ask for some statistics and some interval. So basically, here in the report service model, there is the global to node ID. So which to node, which run function ID, which is basically which service model, which interval. I want every one millisecond, two milliseconds, five milliseconds. And here I want the function, basically a callback. I want it to, to come back. After that, I get a handle. And once I get this handle also, at some point I may want to remove also. Um, this uh, re uh, report subscription. And the same applies for the control. I mean, you just have the E2 node to which service model you want and which data you want to send it there. Nothing more. Um, yes, uh, for the XAP queries, like since um, there may be some more complex operations involved, uh, we decided to embed it a the database into the XAP so that you can also make all the SQL queries and they are also available for for the for the end user. 
Um, and so you don't need to take the burden of, of all this and you get all the power. I mean, you can do select all that with this ID from and so on. So this is also available for, for all of you. So we want it to be also multi-language and efficient. And Swift is an interface compiler that connects programs written in C, C++ with scripted languages. You may have Perl, Python, Ruby, Tickle, Java, JavaScript, Go, uh, D, C Sharp, uh, and so on. And the idea is that the SDK is written in efficient uh, in C and that according to our needs, we use the Swift compiler to generate code for other languages. <coughs> Um, one little caveat for people that they are using Python. I don't know if you call it caveat or just some information from them. Um, for callbacks from C to Python, you need to acquire something that is called the global log interpreter. Um, this is not due to FlexFreak. This is due to a Python design. Um, the GL is needed to, to avoid data races in Python. And since the Python, the memory model, basically you are counting the references that you have to an, to an object. When it becomes to zero, basically you, you, you mark it and, and later the garbage collector may come and, and may clean it up for you. And the problem was that uh, in order to control how many threads they, they get into the, the Python interpreter, what, what they did is a very implement a very um, fat lock. Uh, and this it means that when the Python the Python code is single threaded when when it is called from the callback so whenever you are running it in FlexTrick and uh, you are uh, retrieving some data the code will be single threaded um, therefore you probably you don't want to spend much time in the callback yes, especially if you are asking for a lot of data and so on probably you want to be there relatively fast. So um, let's move here forward. To some <clears throat> frequently asked questions that we get here in the project. So I try to answer them. So uh, why did you invent uh, the E42 instead of using the, the something that such as the GRPC? This was a discussion that we were having some days ago so here it comes my answer so the grpc the remote procedure calls is a by definition is a cross-platform open source high performance remote procedure call framework that it was first developed uh, in 2002 and it, that it was open source i think in 2016. it uses http2 and proto buffers um, which nowadays, like in the gaming industry, for mobile phones, they have been mostly replaced by, by flat buffers, which are faster. This, of course, makes some sense for Google, but for us, not that much, in the sense that um, we already had a protocol, which it was E2AP. We are using raw SCTP socket. And there was not really a need of adding more sub layers there, um, which it will make also our, our software slow and apart from it, or slower, I don't want to say slow, slower. And apart from it, we will need some dependencies, which it is always a bad idea. Uh, currently, what we are doing, we encode and decode using ASN.1, but if you read the original papers, we also had a version working with flat buffers. So actually, this can be designed at compile time, since we use a static polymorphism at exactly zero cost and at runtime, which is very nice. And this is uh, the answer oh, with some data. Uh, this is from a paper that uh, I have submitted. Um, you can see here the delay that we have for an E2 control and an E2 indication. Uh, here we are talking about something around um, 70 microseconds. I want here to, to be very clear. And this is this is very fast. I mean, um, to put a number, uh, right now in Uplink, in open air interface, for the code in a segment, you will need at least 250 microseconds. If you are using 256 QAM, I believe that you will need 
36 seg uh, segments. Um, this means that if you are lucky and you have 36 cores in your machine, you will at, at least, and meaning that you have a thread pool that scales perfectly 250 microseconds. So, and what I want to say with this is that even in these um, layers where real time is really a must, um, we are doing like very well, very, very well. There is a lot of margin right now for, for flex streak. So it's very efficient in that sense. <clears throat> Another question that I got recently is why we didn't use the E2AP um, that it was developed by the by Oran. I mean, why you develop a, a new E2AP version from scratch, no? Um, and it took a lot of time and, and quite a lot of effort. And my answer to yeah. this kind of question is normally this one, and is that Onos and, and Oran um, code, it was probably developed under time constraints and um, you, you pay a price for that. And <clears throat> you can see this piece of code this is a, for a subscription request from for Onos in the OI repository. Uh, I was there like four days ago. Um, and it is not that you are casting a calloc, which you should not cast in C because C and C++, they are two different languages. Um, you need to do this in C++, but not in C. Um, I mean, when you say criticality equals zero here, which by the way, it's a magic number, if you see here the specifications, you will see that the assigned criticality is ignore. Ignore actually is a one, it's not a zero here. Even thought this is, you cannot guess it probably from that zero. Um, and not just that, I mean, you see that the rig action ID is fixed to five. Um, this is also a bug, you should not do that. This is at least what the, the standard specification says. Um, and um, well, this comment uh, goes also for a, a young colleague that he was the other day complaining about magic numbers in, in FlexRig. Um, well, FlexRig may have some, but these are real magic numbers. I mean, when when you see something like zero and you don't really know what is it, and then we didn't like this. So what we what we did actually is we tested everything with the code coverage, a profiler. Everything is tested with a thread sanitizer and another sanitizer. So um, we go through all the possible, uh, or at least many of the, of the possible function calls that our code uh, can have to be sure that what we are releasing actually, it, it is working as it should. And probably the, the third question that I get is like, uh, why it was not developed as a cloud native software? In, so, Trendy this. Uh, okay, so by definition, the cloud native is an approach in software development that uh, utilizes cloud computing to build and run scalable applications in modern dynamic environments such as public, private, and uh, hybrid clouds. <clears throat> well, the problem is that this was clearly violating the idea of zero overhead principle, and is that you don't pay for what you don't use, and containers they do use resources. Um, so this is the why it was not. In any case, FlexRig is easily deployable since we don't use any third-party um, software. We just use SQLite 3 and you can actually download the code because it has a very nice license. And we compile it like all the time. So um, you will not get into some problems of compatibility of different versions and so on, which is one of the, the places where containers also make sense when you, you have different um when you actually have um, different dependencies and, and you need also the exact number it, it can be a very it is a pain, very painful uh, uh, problem nowadays so uh, here is some comparison that it was done some time ago regarding Oran rig the onos and flex rig so the zero overhead um we are following it for encoding and decoding in FlexRig, you can um, basically change this uh, at compile time, so you can decide which one you have. E2AP versions that they were using, E2AP information elements, so out of 26 that the version one has, like the Oran rig only has implemented seven. 
and honors they only have 10. Okay, we had 26 and, and we we stopped there, but uh, what I want and, and 12 for, for flat buffers. What I want to say is that uh, flex uh, E2AP library is much more tested and much more advanced. For porting it to E2 nodes, uh, the ORAN rig has been ported to radices, the ONOS rig to OAI, SRS radices, flex rig it has, uh, and you, you have a patch to OAI, OAI and SRS. Uh, by the way, the E2 agent is going also to be uh, merged um, into, into develop. Um, so there is a merge request there and the E2 agent, it will become by default. So you will also, you can spare the, the, the patch. Regarding the memory footprint, actually FlexRig is, is much smaller. Um, the latency, uh, we, are, we are saying here 10 times faster, but probably it is more. <clears throat> and different uh, the service models, we are using this plugin architecture. So this is a bit more regarding the, the X app. Um, what do we use in Oran SC? They, they used to use this RMR library in honors this uh, year PC, while we use this E42. Um, there is some coupling, while we try to maintain a coupling as low as possible. Um, the same applies for the service models. Here, the idea was that well you can actually build different near real-time rigs one on top of the other um, but this is more a, a research thing um, for data collection mechanisms polling or event driven the exa baseline sdk um, here the, the most important thing probably is that flex rig sdk is written in on c on c11 and since we use suic we can use all the all the interfaces that that suic provides so now let's move a bit um, to live coding. Just a second. So here we have our flex rig depth. So let's first move somewhere not very important. And the first thing that we will do is we will open just the main. So uh, you need arc C, you need an arc B. You probably want to return something, success. You will need to include here the header. In this case, you, then, you probably have another path, but um, I think that you get what I want to, you get what I want to do. Um, so basically it's this API, what you need. So if we go to this API file, actually, this here you have the functions, init x app, try to stop. Here you can uh, get all the E2 nodes that they are connected. So let's just be a bit lazy and copy them, come back. So we will need probably to init. So there is a function that is called uh, init fr args. Well, basically you will get the arguments initialized for you. You can basically pass them in the in the command line. And then you will need to, to init it. So you need here. And here you probably, yes. So one of the things, why we have this try stop and not this stop? And, and the answer is basically this yield, uh, it can create um, uh, a deadlock. So this is the basic idea of why this is needed. So let's sleep a bit while we are here, something like one millisecond should be okay. So while this is false. We probably also need here the, the header. So uh, this one, the Unix standard. 
So let's now, once we are connected, we can also just say like, okay, let's let's wait a bit until the connection is done. Um, this was usually the case. I think that this is not needed anymore. Anyway, I, I put it there just in case. So here it comes the array. And whenever you acquire an array, that it of course will have some memory. You want to be nice with the oh, yep, sorry. You want also to be nice with the operating system and just liberate the memory when you finish. And now what we can say is that if this array, the length is bigger than zero, so we at least have one E2 node connected. Let's do something very easy. Let's just print the run function ID. Uh, for example, so we say from this array um, dot the node, the first one, and this is the acknowledge run functions because we are interchanging. So from the first run function that is accepted, I want the ID. Um, of course, you need appropriate libraries for printing files. So uh, it is as easy as what I have just done for a program. So we have the main, RC, we init the arguments, we init our X app. We will ask how many E2 nodes are connected. We will see that uh, if the length is more than one, we will print the first acknowledge RAM function ID. And later we will just stop. So um, what you also have in Plextric that is very handy, you know, thought it is not the topic of of today. Well, I think this is not built. Okay, Royce, we'll take a bit. In the meantime, let's start here. The interface, e to a p. This is taking a bit of time. So from uh, it has very handy things, I believe. For example, under examples, you have uh, an agent emulator. So you don't need to start the base station. You can just, for example, start one of these, for example, and this will act as a GNOV. The first thing it will um, go to the address and the, the port is the E2AP port. Here it is saying that this base station and uh, you know, V, it will open this, the service models that you have installed in your system and it will try to connect. And if it cannot connect, it will resend a, a setup request after a timeout, as I mentioned before. So here you can also go to the rig and you can start the rig. So we can see here actually that we have this setup request and setup response. The setup request in this small form, the packet, because we are sending service models that they are not as specified by ORAN. Okay. Um, we are going a bit beyond them. And uh, actually, the, the sector here of, of Wireshark does, does not uh, see it. Anyway, coming back here to our <clears throat> to our X app. So what we need is to Compile. So for that, we need to tell it um, where the archive is. Uh, and the archive, um, it has been generated um, here. So here we are uh, telling it um, where this uh, SDK is to be found. Um, and now what we need to say actually is, um, where are these service models, which they are here. And then we need, this is also dependency, we need SCTP, but I think that this is acceptable for everybody. So it compiled. Now, if we try to see whether this will work, it will tell you that it cannot find these um, shared objects. And this is because you, you need to, to 
add into the um, loading library path, actually the one of Flexfreak. So now if you run the X app, it will actually connect and it will tell you that the thirst from function ID is this one for two, okay? Here you will not see anything because there was no connection between the rig and the E2 node. So probably the next thing that we would like to do is that since we succeed, let's also create a little function here. So something like this. When, whenever a packet arrives, it will land here. So we will need the function to connect and then to remove from it. So for this handle, we get something like answer equal we want to report. So then globally to note in this array dot n. So on the first one, you need the ID. Um, we need the service model ID. In this case, this one will make it, which is the first one that we have there. We have here the interval, um, maybe an interval, five milliseconds, maybe helpful, something like this. So every five milliseconds, we will be generating statistics. Um, and here is the, the, the function where it will come once the, the packet arrives. And um, of course, what we need here is a reference. So once we have sent it, let's say that we will wait something like, uh, I don't know, three seconds. Hope that it makes sense for everybody. And let's just remove this handle that in this handle, actually, what we are doing is we are uniquely identifying our X app that it was needed before as explained. So here we remove it. So probably now it looks a bit better, the software, and just let's print something here. Um, let's print the, the timestamp of, of when the packet was generated, for example. So, you, you, okay, here I'm doing, I, I know that uh, the first one is, is Mac, so I can assure that it's Mac, so in the message, Let's see what the timestamp says. And now you just need to you compile it again. You just see actually that you can find them. And you can run the E2AP. Here you will see the timestamp. You can see that it is pretty accurate in the sense that every five milliseconds you are getting it. So 59, 64, 69. So it's, it's pretty good in that sense. Here we had all these rig indication messages that they were generated every five milliseconds. In fact, here what we, the agent told us is that there was a subscription request and that was the subscription delete request also. Okay, so I think that um, you, you have seen that I have done this in, in five minutes. So um, it is very, very easy to use. Really, really easy. Um, maybe now I want just to say a couple of things because most of you, you will be using this in Python. So I think that it deserves uh, spending here <clears throat> a couple of, of, um, of minutes. Sorry, this is not the path. Um, so this is the path. So in Python, what, what it happens actually, what it happens is that um, there is this share object here that if you if you read like the symbols that you, you have on it, you will see, for example, that 
Um, you have all the information actually, for example, for copying a Mac control message and so on. So, so basically this is the, the share object where you have all the information of the SDK. And what you have here is this XAP SDK Pi, which is the, the wrapper actually of your program. Here you can see that the first thing that it will do, it, it will import this XAP SDK. Um, okay, and from, from here it will start um, Actually, it will load it and then it will call, call it. It's the way that uh, your Python and, and your <clears throat> C programs, they work. And if we go, for example, to, let's see here some um, monitoring, so XAP. So the first thing that we do here is we import um, this wrapper that I have just mentioned as Rick. Um, in this example, the idea is that also we are doing the same. We are just initing it tell me which are the connected E2 nodes. Um, I will create a handler because I need it. I will ask for a report, in this case, every one millisecond. Um, I will sleep for one second and then, um, you know, we do this for all of uh, for all of them and until we, we end, basically. So we can also um, run it. Um, as you can see here, uh, what you are reading here is the, the difference that you are getting between the moment that the packet is created until you are reading this in, in Python. So I want to mention that if you if here is low, we mean 200 microseconds. You know, um, this, is, this is actually faster than decoding in the physical uh, supplier. Um, and you get, you need to do more things than just, just decoding one segment. So, so I want to, to, to be clear here that it is quite fast. And here, if we see, you can see in in the in Wireshark all the messages that they were generating. And then we just, um, here the subscription delete request when set, when it was sent for all the, the service models, in this case, for Mac, LLC, and, and PDCT in this example. That said, I think that you have seen that it is really easy to develop an, an XAP since you only have this init, a stop, get the numbers of, of um, E2 nodes, and then you just have uh, report, remove from report, and control. So basically, you either get the statistics and, uh, or you control it, and, and that's it. It's, it's very, very easy. Um, and now I think that it is the time for for questions and answers. Um, I don't know if you had some questions. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, Mike. Hello. Yeah, as a Prashanti from TCS, I just wanted to know what are you running in those uh, command windows? Can you just go to that demo page? Sure. The other one. Uh, what? All, all you are running here, it's one G node B, uh, <coughs> UG. Yes, so what I was running here, sorry, uh, I'm using here the emulator, which is very, very handy. So basically, okay. I am emulating a G node B, but in the same okay. sense, <coughs> you so could start with, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You are not running real G node B here, you are running E2 emulator, right? I'm running the the two, but actually the code is the same. I mean, okay. the, so so yes. The the only difference actually that you have in this emulator, um, I didn't have time to go here in, in a bit deep. But the idea is that what you have is an interface that is read and write, um, and basically here you will be reading some random statistics. And this is one of the reasons that you can see here that the length of the packets actually it it changes with the time. Um, OK, so. <coughs> yes. and, and I want also to say that the E2 node, there is a merge request for open air interface. Um, so soon it will it will be the, 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 I mean, you will not even need to do the, the patch. Sorry, it, it not even? Not, not even the patch, no. You will need to have just the flag in OAI when you compile it. You will just say, I want to add the, 
the E2 agent and, and that will be. We, we will keep you informed once once we once we once we are there. Um, somebody else has some questions, yeah. maybe? Hi, uh, this is can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, this is Uday from uh, University of Minnesota. So I have a um, version of SRS RAM. So if I, uh, you know, I'm not using the actual version, I created a branch and I'm working on my own. If I apply this patch, will it be straightforward uh, and work in SRS RAM as well? Sorry, I, um, if I understood correctly, you created a branch? Yeah, branch of SRS RAM. If I apply yes. Play this flexrip, uh, flexrip uh, patch to my SRS RAM. Is it a straightforward patch, or uh, will well, there be any issue? Well, I, I mean, it depends. <laughs> like any patch, it depends where you wrote something in, in SRS RAM. But it should be a straightforward because it is pretty easy in the sense that you the, the interface is just read and write. In any case, I would advise to. I mean. We will give, it's much more easy also for us because we have more expertise in, in OAI. Okay. So, so but, but SRS run, it should, be, it should be out of the box also. Okay, yeah. Thank you for a nice presentation. Thank you. Please. Um, um, I don't know if I can see here the chat. Somebody had anything else to comment on? Um, yeah, yeah, Michael, uh, one more uh, question. Like, we have any UI support for Flexric method? Sorry again? We have any GUI support for this Flexric, uh, Michael, to showcase uh, any demos, like whatever run optimization we are doing. It, it supports any. UI support where we can show RB allocation and resource allocation and basically the Mac stats or PTCP stats on the screen. Uh, mm -hmm. We have any UI support with this Flexric, Flexric because I, I heard from someone it has even some kind of UI support also. Um, um, I, I don't know if I understood correctly the, the, the question. Um, so it is if whether you have support for um, user interface, user interface where we get the stats. Well, like actually, other, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for the uh, again mentioned that neither, but um, basically all the statistics they will go here into this database. Right. So, so you can you can actually any <laughs> user interface for reading the statistics of SQLite it will work. Oh, um, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but but there is no like uh, if you see Juniper's rig or uh, some other uh, organizations rig, they have uh, uh, UI support available where they are showcasing. If you see Oran live demos, so Oran um, demos uh, which are available, so they have uh, UIs they're showcasing their POCs. I'm just asking something like that, anything available or no, because I have we, heard, yeah. We, we have you know, we have done this in the future, um, sorry, in the past. Um, basically, you mean something like a Grafana display and so on. Right, right, exactly. This is, this is really a straightforward to do it. Um, in, in fact, in the code, um, there is a place where you will be calling InfluxDB and InfluxDB uh, has a direct, you can directly connect it with Grafana. Um, the mm -hmm. problem is that we didn't want to add a dependency into, we did a balance, okay. like sh okay. should, we, should we add this dependency or not? Um, and the answer was, was not, I mean, if you are interested in doing something with Grafana, and um, please let let us know um, be, because it's it's not tough at all. I mean, it, it's it's pretty simple. But we didn't want to add um, a dependency there. Oh, okay. And it it, it has any CLI support, CLI command support. Uh, with some commands, can we uh, instead of running XAP, can we uh, insert JSONs or something like that? Well, actually, you will need to 
you will need to do something like that uh, for yourself if you want to do with the X app, in the sense that you have the X app here as I did. Huh. Huh. Uh, yeah, um, uh, it's very. I mean, really easy if you want just to implement something for uh, I don't know HTTP server. Uh, if you want some UDP sockets, if you want, this is uh, relatively easy. But, um, okay. but it's, this, it's not it's, available uh, now because in, in, in FlexRig demo, I saw that through CLI, uh, they are typing some commands for changing the uses of resources. So mm. That's why asking what is that they are doing because I could not able to see it clearly in that demo. Mm -hmm. um, no, the idea is that th this was implemented um, by ourselves and it was never merged. The, but the, the idea mm -hmm. of these things is that they are um, pretty simple to do them. And we, we don't see a real value into adding this into the, the code base in the sense that it will take you something like, I don't know, two hours to implement something like this, maybe one day. In, in, in except the sense you're that, talking, except you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we, um, it is. It is not. The, maybe if we see a good scheme at some point, I. I, I don't say that um, we will not implement something like that at some point. But um, that's not the case until until today. Um, okay. 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 Thanks, Michael. That's okay. uh, nice presentation, and we got a lot of info out of it. Okay, um, I think that we are running here out of time. Um, I want to thank you, all of you, for attending. And uh, one thing that I think it's very important for us, we need your feedback. Your feedback is needed, uh, especially because I would like to know where are you using this, why are you using this, um, where would you like to see FlexRig move into. Um, and we, I, we take this very seriously because I can have some ideas, but I definitely have less ideas than, than the whole community that it is using OAI. Uh, oh, sorry, um, FlexRig in this case. Um, so, so please, uh, if you could feel it, we, we would really appreciate it. You can also subscribe to the um, Mosaic 5G group because FlexTrick is part of the Mosaic 5G group. And you can maybe read also something more in, in, in the links of openairinterface.org uh, slash mosaic So with that said, um, I want to thank you all. And I hope that you have a nice afternoon if you're in Europe and if you're in other places based. Um, well, either good morning or, or good night. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Uh,